Since I feature so many different type of arcade controllers on my channel, I thought it would be worthwhile to make an overview video showing all of the different controllers I use. A lot of people ask me about my setup, and the truth is I don't have a single setup for my arcade games. Instead I have a bunch of individual controllers that you see here, and then I'll set them up depending on what game I'm playing. Uh, I can't even in my mind come up with a way to make a single control panel to feature everything here, and that's really one of the reasons why I've stuck with this method. Maybe one day I'll come up with something or make multiple cabinet uh, type controllers, but for now, this is what I use. So before I go through the controllers, I thought I'd show you what I actually play on since I don't have a permanent setup. I use this here, which is a projector stand. This is made by Daylight uh, Project O stand, they call it. Something like this actually cost about $150 to $200. Um, I got it for free years ago at a job I worked at. They were throwing a bunch out. I just took one, not thinking I'd ever use it, but uh, I wish I would have grabbed a, a few extra in case this one ever breaks. Um, but it is useful. Um, these legs can be adjusted to whatever height you want. Uh, you can actually unscrew them and attach it under the table and store it away, which is nice. Uh, I put a little rubber on top to prevent the controllers from slipping. So all I do is I take the controller, or sometimes controllers, depending on what the setup is, and place them on top of this, put them in front of my TV, and that's my simulated arcade cabinet when I'm playing. So first up we have the standard arcade controller, 8-way joystick and some buttons. This is of course a two-player version, uh, and also you can use the two sticks for uh, dual joystick games like Smash TV or Robotron. Uh, you might see this pop up on my channel from time to time, but I don't feature it that much. The way I look at it, if you're into arcade gaming, having this type of setup is a no-brainer. I mean, so many games use this standard setup that there's not much for me to really feature um, on my channel. One thing people might not realize about this controller is that there's actually two buttons on the side. I usually use them for putting a coin in, but they're great for pinball, and I would use this as the uh, plunger. I don't use this anymore, I'll, I'll show you why later, but that's one feature that's on there and uh, something to consider if you're making controller as well to feature some pinball buttons on the side. Next up is my trackball controller. This is a standalone unit also made by X Arcade. However, they don't make this anymore. Uh, they since came out with the tank stick which basically combines this with the standard controller I just showed you. Uh, you can use this for games like Marble Madness, uh, Centipede, uh, Missile Command, but the Big draw for me was to be able to play Golden Tee, and I've more than got my money's worth with this controller playing Golden Tee. Um, this controller has three buttons on each side. This used to be a button. It functions as a mouse, so these are actually your three mouse buttons, and this is actually just the same thing. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, I love having my trackball, mostly for Golden Tee, and some bowling games as well. So this is my spinner controller. This is the Turbo Twist 2. I replaced one of the buttons on my trackball controller with this. What's nice is that this will fit in the same size hole as these buttons, so I didn't have to do any drilling besides a little hole for the wire. Now, like the trackball, this also functions as a mouse. Originally, I left these two buttons as they were, so they still worked with a trackball, but because Golden T4 uses five buttons, I actually uh, hooked up these buttons to this spinner here. So now I have five separate buttons on this controller with the trackball and the spinner, so I, have, uh, I can use all of them. Um, this is the standard uh, top for it. You can also get, um, I guess, uh, premium tops, they call them, which are heavier and nicer, um, which have a little weight to them, too. I'm perfectly happy with uh, this uh, standard top here, but there's a little thing underneath called an energy storage cylinder. It's a little cylinder about this big, and basically it's uh, weighted so when you spin the uh, spinner, it doesn't stop on the dime. You can see here took a few seconds for it to stop and that's nice when you're playing certain games where you want to kind of you know rotate it quickly in, in either direction um, but I do love having this controller it's great for games like Arkanoid and uh, Tempest you can get a steering wheel attachment for this for 360 degree driving games I will talk about that a little bit later in the video next up I have a pair of aim track light guns technically they're not light guns they actually function more like a Wii remote where there's a camera inside and then it points at a light bar on top of or below the TV. Uh, but they do work on modern TVs, whereas a real light gun won't. You need an old school CRT TV for that. Um, the only problem I have with these, the calibration was a little bit annoying. I had to do it several times before I got it. But the main reason was because I'm playing on a large 47 inch TV, which is certainly bigger than they were designed for or really you're going to find in an arcade. 
So if you're playing on a normal size monitor, you shouldn't have that issue. Um, I keep the crosshairs on when I play. You'll see my videos, I always have the crosshairs on. Uh, but you can, if you calibrate it uh, properly, play without them. A lot of people will have success with that. I just don't really care that much about it. I, I'm more of a casual Lycan game fan, so it's crosshairs are fine with me. Other than that, though, I, I really like these guns. I've gotten a lot of use out of them. These are pre-made guns from ArcadeGuns.com, and you can buy just the AimTrack system, which is the camera and circuit board and some wiring, and you can actually put them in whatever gun you want. I've seen people take an old NES Zapper and make an AimTrack gun out of them. Um, these will work on more than just MAME. You can also use them on like an NES emulator and, and play Duck Hunt, so I'm really happy I'm able to do that with these. Next up, I have three analog flight sticks, which is certainly more than any normal person should have. So originally I bought one of these. Uh, this is the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTAS X, I believe is the full name of it. And HOTAS stands for Hands-On Throttle and Stick. And the throttle was really what attracted me to this particular controller. A lot of the flight sticks don't have that. And this is a nice uh, throttle here for if you want to air brake or use the afterburners in games like Afterburner or G-Lock. Uh, these two parts will separate if you have a more permanent setup, so that's kind of cool. The reason why I bought two of them, honestly, um, I thought it would be cool to play Episode 1 Racer on N64 with two throttles, and it does work really well for that. Uh, also, certain games like Cyber Sled use two analog sticks, and it, it works with that. And I guess if I'm ever playing a two-player game, I have two of them, but really it was for the uh, dual throttle and, and dual analog sticks. So the reason I have a third one is simply because somebody gave this to me for free. So um, I will say this though, I, I don't care for the, this is the throttle here, I don't really care for it. The actual stick here is a little more responsive than the Thrustmaster. This is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. So if I am playing a game that has just a single stick and no throttle or anything, I actually would prefer using this. And I should mention that these sticks on all the controllers I showed you do rotate here and occasionally I'll find a use for that in certain games. But those are my analog flight sticks. So this is a controller that I built. I wanted to have a simple controller with a true four-way joystick. Most games use one or two buttons, but there's a game called Mousetrap that has three main buttons plus a fourth one to call the dog in. So I did intentionally design this to support that game as well as every other one that uses the four-way joystick. Since I'm playing Pac-Man games with this, I thought of the game Baby Pac-Man, which has a four-way joystick to control Pac-Man, but it's also a pinball game, so I needed to have pinball buttons as well. So what I did is, after the fact, I went and added some pinball buttons on the side. Originally, I just had the one white button here, but a lot of, well, maybe not a lot, but a, a good number of pinball games use a secondary button, which is usually called a magnesite button. Uh, it was a game called Black Knight that originally uh, had that feature that had a second button on each side. I couldn't add it to my X Arcade, which I was using at the time for a pinball game, so I was just barely able to fit it on this controller, which is why I have two buttons on each side. Um, I didn't originally design it for that, so this was something I was kind of throwing in after the fact. Had I planned it better, I would have actually made this controller wider. I didn't originally intend to use this for pinball, but because I have the Magnus 8 buttons, uh, I use this for pinball now as well as any uh, four-way games. One nice thing about having a standalone controller is that for playing something weird like Qbert where everything is rotated 45 degrees, I just rotate the controller 45 degrees and now it works fine. I also play a Congo Bongo like this. So this was another project I did and it's honestly been kind of a nightmare. Um, I wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to use one of these outdoor electrical boxes uh, instead of creating the box like I did in the uh, four-way controller. Um, and honestly, I think it came out pretty good. I mean, it looks stupid, but uh, it's pretty solid. So far, I haven't had any issues. So I think that portion was a success. But the controller, I wanted to have um, two eight-way joysticks with buttons to play mostly tank games. Um, and I love the way these handles feel and the buttons and everything, but the problem was hitting the diagonals on certain games was impossible. It came with these switches that... It's hard to see how much force I'm put, putting on it, but it, they need a little bit of force to actually uh, push in. And a lot of times on those diagonals, I just it, it would just miss them all the time. And I, I did so much adjusting, I even pretty much broke the controllers. Eventually what I did is I put two of these um, eight-way zippy controllers in, but the problem is they're not designed to have the buttons here, so I had to actually run the wires out of the back of the controller. But when you're playing, you don't really notice it and it actually keeps them in position. It's honestly an eyesore, I realize that. 
But, you know, it hits those diagonals perfectly, and I can play a bunch of different tank games like uh, Assault and Vindicators and Battlezone. Um, there's also a, a secondary uh, function, which I'll show you right now. If I'm playing something like Tron, which has an 8-way joystick and a button and a spinner, uh, I can just uh, set this spinner controller next to it, and I have all the controls I need to play Tron or Mad Planets. I also use this for games like uh, Kari Warriors, where I use this to turn your guy, and then you have your movement and shooting on this controller. Uh, so it does it does have a, a function. It just uh, didn't come out quite as good as I wanted. I'm not sure if I'm really done with it, but for now, that's what I'm using to play tank games and some of these odd control games like Akari Warriors or Tron. Next up, we have a DDR dance pad. This cost me $10 and includes free shipping from China. You probably get what you pay for. I don't use it that much, but it does function. It just plugs in the... Uh, USB in your computer, so if you want to play Dance Sense Revolution on MAME, you can. Um, I'm not sure how good the um, audio uh, video sync is when you're playing a game like this on MAME. Uh, in addition to MAME, though, you can play a bunch of DDR games on uh, the original PlayStation and maybe even PS2. I do think the sync is a little better there because I believe they give you options on the home versions. I've never featured this on my channel. I don't use it that much. I'm probably never going to feature it. I don't want to embarrass myself, but this is available if you want to just uh, goof around and play some DDR games. So this is my current uh, racing setup. I originally used a um, Xbox 360 controller, which worked with PC. It worked fine. It was pretty cheap. I think I paid 50 bucks for it. Um, but I ended up getting a G27 because I had a, a few features that this didn't have. Um, first of all, the wheel is not limited to 270 degrees. It actually goes up to 900, but you can adjust it depending on what you're playing. Usually I'm playing on 270, but it's nice to have that. It has a clutch pedal, plus it has the six-speed shifter here. So having all those additional options, plus some better force feedback, uh, kind of forced me to buy this. This is the stand I have for the steering wheel. Uh, it's called the GT Omega Racing Steering Wheel Stand. Uh, it's made out of metal. It's pretty sturdy. Uh, it also has a lot of adjustments. You can adjust the angle of the wheel, the angle of the pedals, uh, the height of the wheel, the height of the shifter. You can even purchase a separate attachment to attach a racing chair to it. So it's got a lot of options and it includes all the hardware to actually attach these units to the stand. So all in all, it's a um, pretty good addition to my uh, racing setup. Lastly, we have a 360 degree steering wheel, which I have to admit, my setup is pretty much a work in progress. Um, I mentioned before you can use the Turbo Twist 2 as a 360 degree wheel. They give you the little tool you need to uh, take the top off and then you would put the steering wheel on here. Now it comes with either a 5, 6, or 7 inch steering wheel. For some reason I got the smallest one, the 5 inch one, I'm not really sure why, but it kind of turned out to be a blessing in disguise. I love the way it feels, like the materials that are used and everything. But it's, it's definitely too small. You can see in some of the um, videos I have that it's just way too small for my hand. It does work, though. It's better than nothing. Um, the reason that they didn't make anything larger than 7 inches from what I read is they were concerned about the weight uh, if they went uh, beyond that. So what I did is I bought this really cheap plastic uh, steering wheel. This cost me maybe $15, if that. Um, and then I attached it to the 5-inch steering wheel that came with it. Now, of course, I attached it with uh, zip ties just as a test, and this was a couple years ago, and you can see they're still there. So um, uh, it's sort of a permanent work in progress at this point. But what's nice is the weight of this uh, cheap plastic wheel and the 5-inch wheel is actually slightly less than the 7-inch wheel, so I don't have to worry about uh, weight being an issue. Um, and it does work. See, it, it spins nicely. Uh, one issue when I, when I prop this up when I play is that the steering wheel has a tendency to go like this because a certain portion weighs more than the rest. And I did two things. Normally I'll stick something like a gauze bandage or something underneath and then adds just a little bit of friction. Plus I actually more recently tried uh, adding a little counterbalance to it. I put some coins on here just as a, a test and it actually seems to mostly stay in place when I play. Uh, but otherwise it, it works fine. Um, so that's what I'm using now. Like I said, it's it's kind of a work in progress with zip ties and electrical tape, but uh, maybe one day I'll revisit it. I always say that, and of course it still looks like this. Um, but it does work. I can play pole position. I can play off-road. I uh, use this in conjunction with the setup I just showed you with the pedals and the shifter if I need it. Um, and that's it. 
So that covers all of my uh, different controllers. Uh, if I do get more that I use, maybe I'll make an update to this video. But for now, I think I'm pretty happy. I have uh, most of my bases covered with everything you've seen here.